Now, the Initiative for African Trade and Prosperity, IATP, has released a report titled Africa's Free Trade and Future that examines the potential benefits of the African Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFTA, for Nigeria. According to the report, the AFCFTA could help Nigeria reduce its high unemployment rate of around 40% by boosting industrial growth and expanding trade. One of the report's authors, Alex Jolin, stated that strategic implementation of the AFCFTA could create sustainable economic change in Africa by increasing wages, strengthening the manufacturing base and improving agricultural efficiency. Executive Director of Ominera Initiative Larry Peter Elufison further explained that the AFCFTA presents an opportunity for Nigeria to move beyond crude oil exports and expand its manufacturing and agriculture. He added that the agreement could lift 50 million Africans out of poverty, what Nigeria expected to experience one of the highest reductions. Now, the report suggests that the AFCFTA has the potential to increase intra-African trade by 52% by 2035, which would be particularly beneficial for Nigeria given the size of its market. It also highlights policy recommendations such as infrastructure investment, harmonization of national policies and support for small and medium enterprises that could help Nigeria leverage the AFCFTA to drive economic development and lift millions out of poverty. Now back to our discussion on the budget and economy. International finance and economic analyst Mokta Mohammed joins me now for more on that conversation. Thanks for joining me, Mokta. Mokta, good morning to you. Let's talk about the nation's 2025 budget. Are you with us? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Good morning, Justin. All right. Let's talk about the budget that um, we are proposing for the year 2025. I want us to look at some of the key parameters. I feel we have been too optimistic with what we have right now. Mokta, we are projecting an exchange rate of 1,400, you're even smiling, 1,400 uh, naira to the dollar. And we're looking at, um, let me see, an inflation rate of about 15.8%. Mukta, we have well over 30. What's going on? What are your thoughts, really? Uh, I agree with you that this is the most ambitious budget. Uh, you know, the last time I said it, their budget, Last time was I used the same statement. I said it's about, it was an ambitious budget. Uh -huh. And I'm still using the same statement today again, saying it was an ambitious budget. Wow. And that last budget have not even achieved anything that we've always desired that it will achieve. And I'm not sure this present budget is going to be anything different. You just hit the nail on the head. Exchange rate of 1,400. I mean, I don't know how we, we can achieve that with the kind of exchange rate that we have. Oil production of 2.06 million barrels per day. Mm. That is also very, very uh, uh, ambitious, where we cannot even produce 1.4 million, uh, 1.7 million barrels that we estimated at the last budget uh, uh, budget uh, oil benchmark. Mm. $73 per barrel, we don't, we don't have. Hello, Mokta, are you still there? All right, we'll try you never can see. I think um, see a lot to be done. Uh, like I... Yeah, go ahead. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. So, 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 so there's still there's still there's still a lot. Uh, you you hit the other name, fifty one percent. I mean, fifty one percent down in inflation. That would be. Um, we, we we remember we talked that we if if if. If you remember the miracle of the man when um, <laughs> the Nigerian flying eagles were down at that time by 4 0 and equalized and won. So, this would be an economic miracle of the century to oh. bring that inflation by 51% within a, a, a budgetary year. I mean, it's going to be huge. It's going to be. I want to see how that miracle will happen. But as I'm sitting here, um, I don't see that happening. Because I, I still am wondering, um, because knowing where we are at, uh, over 30% rate of um, inflation and the Naira swinging to about 1,700 Naira, I don't know, what do we expect to do differently? Like you said, the miracle that we could do to really attain that, because um, we're also in, um, proposing... Um, uh, a debt servicing increase by 91.2% to about 15.38 trillion naira. 
which is about 32.1% uh, of the total budget. How well are we doing with our debt service in Mukta? <coughs> Just that this reason has not been good. I mean, you remember we talked on this program. There was a time that the Minister of Finance said they are going to go back. The revenue has been good. They, might not, mm. they, won't, they are not planning to do any new borrowing. Yeah. And uh, again, they are, you remember they are even still telling us that they are borrowing in 2024. Yet they are borrowing about one point something trillion based on an exchange rate of 800 naira, 800 naira to a dollar. And I said. I, I don't think since this administration came in, we've seen an exchange of 800 naira to a dollar. Oh. So I don't know where they got that, their parameters from that it should be 800 naira. Remember that that was the what they used as the exchange rate at the time that they were passing yeah. the 2024 budget. And we never, never achieved that. So I don't I don't know whether they have borrowed it at that time. They are still putting it. And we have willing buyer, willing seller. So I, I don't know uh, this, this uh, economy... Uh, policy of uh, President Tinubu and his team, they seem to drive us into a lot of confusion and we are thinking and thinking, how would this happen? Maybe they know what we don't we don't know. So for the debt uh, uh, profile, that means it has gone up. Uh, again, we are going to see reduction in terms of capital expenditure, which this government has pride itself to be one of those that, that one of the things they want to achieve. So I, I I'm, 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 I'm just like as confused as you are about this current uh, budget. I, I'm looking at uh, estimated revenue. Mm. And you can see also the revenue, the revenue um, estimation is also very ambitious. So mm -hmm. they are trying to get more Nigerians into the tax bracket. They will get mm. these are ex, uh, uh, assumptions. Sometimes when you are preparing a budget, you deal with the reality on ground. And then you use that to project what you think will happen. But the reality on ground today, oh. as I'm talking to you, does not uh, support some of these uh, uh, parameters that we are seeing in this budget. So debt servicing going up again. We, I mean, the minister was telling that, like I said, that they weren't going to borrow any new borrowing and everything was going to come. But now we are seeing debt servicing going up. So. Uh, the good thing about it that is going through the National Assembly, hopefully the National Assembly will be able to ask them. Do you hear the, I use the word hopefully because um, they, 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 the executive are so confident that the budget will be signed into law before the 25th of December. So I wonder what time the executive will have, to, I mean the legislation will have to go through those budgets and make sure that um, what it's supposed to, to, to meet is, is, is actually uh, able to meet it. Okay, but looking at all of that now, with all of these uh, projections and um, the proposals and everything, let's look at the 2025 to 2027 MTEF. You know, we've just talked about debt servicing, but from all indications now, the federal government is planning to spend more on servicing debt as against that even capital project, capital expenditure. What does that really tell us? It tells me that um, the government seems to to, have, to be um, maybe they, they are they are losing they are they are losing their way or lose I mean, in terms of what they tend to achieve oh. because um, the, the government pride himself to have reduced debt servicing some some months ago they made they, 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 they even the president was saying that they they made a debt servicing about 90, 90 something percent to the budget and they brought it down to about 60 something percent and here we are again we are thinking of still getting more debt uh, to serve uh, i think they are, like i keep saying we need to begin to think like what the global economy are doing because what we are seeing is government wants to be involved in all projects and why is government not looking at the ppp why are they not doing what they did in their Papa Osho, the expressway. Why are they not doing what they are doing in terms of the uh, um, MM2, the new international airport terminal? Why are they not looking at the PPP? Why are they not giving the project? Why are they not opening up some of this project for people, for private investors, giving them tax bracket to run this project for 25 years or 10 years or 15 years? And then the government will have a lot of fun to invest in social investment like education and healthcare. That's the question. I'm asking. Why are you always thinking that you must be the one to provide everything to carry out a project to take the glory? It's not about taking the glory of a project. I think it's all about let that project be done and be done very well. So and let these companies enjoy tax holidays and they also will employ oh. more Nigerians when they are handling all this construction. That's the way the government should be looking at now. Not really all about, but when you look at that medium plan, you see that the government is looking mostly, mostly towards going to implement virtually every project that they want to do.
Okay, let's uh, take for one moment and talk about um, taxation, which uh, I know you have mentioned so many times in passing uh, this morning. First of all, the federal government seems to want to or has plans to drag you know, much more people into the tax bracket. And there have been so much um, talk with the new tax reform, even uh, the presidential, uh, the guy in charge of um, the whole stuff, the, the reform uh, in the presidential tax uh, reform committee came out to say that uh, this whole uh, tax stuff is not really targeted, you know, at some uh, parts of, um, you know, the country because there have been talks uh, about that. And then again, just the other day, yesterday or two days ago, uh, you know, the FIRS chairman, Zach Adediji, was also in the news and he came out to say about uh, the VAT administration and somehow it seems to be favoring just about three states which have uh, head offices of some businesses, that's Lagos, the FCT, and River State. What are we not doing right when, in terms of our tax administration, Mukhtar, VAT specifically? Well, I, I, I listened to that interview. I mean, I read it in the news and uh, when you're saying that three states are responsible, and so what they want to do now, they are looking at uh, consumption. And I asked myself, even if you go to consumption now, the three states will still be... Mm -hmm high yeah. tech of consumption because <laughs> when you look at Lagos they have the population. Yeah. When you look at River, they, they, they may not have the population but they have the um, um in terms of uh, companies and uh, then the uh, mm -hmm. the the, the networks of those people that stays in rivers that works in some of these companies that have the headquarters. Abuja is there also you 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 know Abuja is always uh, one one almost all government parastatus head office are there. So I don't see anything different uh, that he's saying that will happen if you if you um, decentralize the BET because that's what they want okay. want to do. But I, I think that for some states, uh, this is uh, an opportunity for them to make their state uh, conducive for new investment and bringing in companies. A state like Kano State should not be complaining because in terms of population after Lagos, it's Kano. So when you're talking about consumption, then Kano should have more consumption even in terms of population so there should be any more VET. But because of the the the, the, the earning ability of their own people also it's not even there for them to consume a lot of the product that will be produced in Kano. Today as we are talking about the biggest tomato space company uh, company in Nigeria is in Kano. By Aligo Dangote. Uh, so, but again, how many of their citizens can, or uh, their indigents can afford to buy those tomatoes? So, mm -hmm. government should also begin to think about how they can empower their people and so that the people will have more money to, to buy consumables and the VET will come to them. That's why, right, because even if you like say that oh, you decentralize it, it's not based on consumption. When you look at based on consumption, these three particular people will still be the one to enjoy it because of the networks, the tens of tens of prosperity of the people that are in that in that area again so it it has not changed anything and i think that's why the northern governors are saying you know what uh, you need to do something different because, because it has not changed the narrative it still remains this three stage we still enjoy because they have the population okay, for so consumption so they will still have high BET than any other state where they don't have the com population for consumption they have the networks oh. in terms of the people that have the resources to consume so we should, uh, if you are trying to do the value added tax, you need to begin to encourage governors to, to begin to empower their people and bring in more companies into their states. And that will make every state independent. And yeah. for me, that is what this current uh, value added tax is supposed to achieve. But uh, politics have gone into it. Yeah. Remember before now, if not because of politics, would have gotten judgment. Yeah. Lagos and River State are in, in, in Supreme Court, but they, they, they are looking for a political solution to it. Yeah. And that's why we're, ordinarily the Supreme Court would have given judgment on this, and this and would have been a thing of the past. So a political solution will not help this uh, present situation, rather it will worsen it. Governors should stop complaining and begin to think how they can empower their people, pay the minimum, your pay above right. those minimum which If you look at all these two, let's leave Abuja out of it. If you look at these two states, as it stands now, they are paying the highest in terms of minimum wage. So they are still going to be the one to enjoy. Okay, so what I could just sum up um, from all of this is that um, the governors or the, uh, the managers of the state should actually look inwards and um, better their own state economy so that way they can get more collection. Is that simple, right? Is that simple? You do that. 
try to attract more consumption right. country, I mean, companies to come there. And yeah. secondly, again, begin to improve your internal generated revenue because True. that means that some of the revenue that come from value added tax will not be coming to you like it used to come. All Let right. me give you an instance. In, in some of these states, they don't welcome uh, brewery companies. And then the state that welcome brewery company you want to share, you want to share from the value added tax, you are not creating value for them. Okay. Rather, you are even destroying their goods when they are on their way to some of your states. Right. And even when they sneak it in, some of those people are sentenced to, to prison for doing that or fined for taking it. So you need to begin to look at, attract those products that you think you like in your community so that your people will consume more of that product and you earn more value added tax. So for right. me, I think it's, it's, it's the way to go. Today, right. as we are talking, the biggest, the sixth biggest economy in the world mm. is the state of California in the United States. And 90% of how they generate their revenue is through value added tax. All right. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mokta. You've said it all. And of course, I hope uh, the state managers actually listen and uh, do the needful. I've been speaking with uh, international finance and economic analyst Mokta Mohammed. Many thanks for joining me today. My pleasure, Justin. Thank you for having me. All right. And that's the size of the show for today. My name is Justin Akadoni. Many thanks for being there. Bye for now.